is tap. So it's October, which means it's Halloween spooky, scary month. And I absolutely love psychological thriller, horror movies, all of that stuff. So last night I'm flipping through, had no idea what I was gonna watch. And I stumbled across a movie that looked interesting called Burning Bruh. Let me tell you, after watching this entire movie, seeing the credits roll, I had no idea what I even watched. All I did know was that this was the most uniquely different, creepy, just uh, type of movie that I've seen in a long time. Let me tell you about it. So Burn is one of those movies that only take place in one location. Very similar in keeping with the Halloween theme, you have Saw 1 that takes place in that really dingy and grimy bathroom. Um, Free Fire, which is a movie not a lot of people saw, that takes place in just one factory. This movie, Burn, takes place in a gas station. That's it. But enough setup. Let's talk about this extremely unique movie, Burn. So in the opening credits, this movie does the whole thing where it shows you a glimpse of the end of the movie-ish in the beginning of the movie-ish. That way you're watching the movie and being like, oh, when are we gonna get to that glimpse that we saw in the beginning of the movie? And here we are inside the gas station and we see Melinda, spoiler, her name is Melinda, lighting her cigarette lighter. Huh? The movie called Burn? You with me? Burn, baby. Imagine me on the couch right now with a big old smile on my face being like, oh dude, this might be good. So the first real present day scene of the movie shows Melinda driving up to her job at the gas station in a, in a minivan. Like this is just one little small girl in a minivan. In the van, Melinda shows us something that I know a lot of us out there can relate to. Coming to work about 30 minutes early, me about five minutes early, sitting in the parking lot like, bruh, I don't want to go in this place. Eating your little remnants of your breakfast. I don't want to go to work. And right here, we get a small glimpse of Melinda's social situation. She sees a bunch of kids out there frolicking, having a good time, playing grab butt. And she kind of sits there staring at them. And you kind of get a feel that maybe Melinda doesn't really have a lot of friends. Now, if the way she was looking at those kids was a little too subtle, this is a little bit more on the nose about her social situation, right? She goes up to this random guy just trying to gas up his pickup truck, tells him, hey, you shouldn't be smoking cigarettes next to a gas pump, which is is true but then she goes but hey you can go smoke your cigarette next to my van like who says that hey why don't you come over here and smoke cigarettes next to my van melinda that's what creepers do uh -huh. over there by my van if you want me to show you and this still right here is like the epitome of melinda this like this face that she's giving I can't even do it, dude. I ain't that level of creepy. But after being told a little bit of safety precaution about smoking cigarettes next to your gas pump and getting the how could you decline to smoke cigarettes next to her van, the guy starts to snap at her a little bit and you get this face right here. And this lets you know everything you need to know about Melinda, but let's keep going. So the very first named character other than Melinda is Sheila, one of Melinda's coworkers. Now the director at this point is like, bruh, we have got to let the audience know that Melinda is socially awkward. We've already done it subtly with the kids her own age, having a good time and her being excluded. We did it again with the whole come to my van, smoke a cigarette, creepy invite. And here we are not even five minutes into the movie and Melinda has yet another awkward social interaction. This guy's just trying to get himself some hot Cheetos and some Takis, and here comes Melinda being like, yo, you should try the pistachios. And you can tell the guy's like, I don't really want pistachios. And she's like, no, you need to eat the pistachios. In fact, if you don't like them, I'll give you a money back guarantee. And the guy was like, you are not gonna let this pistachio thing go. I I'll buy the pistachio. The pistachios are really amazing. Cool. So we know Melinda is socially awkward and she works at a gas station as an attendant. So obviously one of the tasks is cleaning the bathroom. Now, if you've ever cleaned a bathroom in a retail or a restaurant situation, you're supposed to put up the wet floor sign so people know not to go into the bathroom. Melinda purposely kicks the sign down. Creepy alert. And dude, for whatever reason, the director is like, dude, get a nice little zoom in on that doo doo butter. Yeah, that's good movie making. This is a camera, apparently. The director used... <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> in the bathroom, Melinda takes a little swipe, swipe break. Who hasn't? Dude, back in the day, I used to spend like at least 74 minutes in there 
every day on the day. But here we go yet again with the creepy counter. I need to have a counter on the screen. I guess I'm gonna have one now. But you see she's been taking some paparazzi shots of a police officer that comes to the gas station. I wonder if this will be important later. Ooh, you know you thirsty when you looking at your boo, your crush, and you hit him with that, that little zoom, enhance. Enhance, enhance. So obviously Melinda knew exactly what she was doing when she kicked down that wet floor sign because some random man comes into the bathroom trying to release his wiggles and there goes Melinda. Once again, creep alert added to the counter. So the guy comes in and he's like, oh, I didn't know you were in here cleaning. You should probably put a sign up. And then Melinda's like, hey, if you want to use the bathroom while I'm here, no big deal. I'll just listen. She didn't say that part, but I feel like that's what she was thinking, you know what I'm saying? So barely six minutes into the movie and we're already getting all of these creepy angles of Melinda thus far, right? Here's another creep alert. She sticks her fingers in the hot coffee jug container. I don't know what those things are called. You know what I'm talking about. She sticks her fingers in there just to feel something. Here you go. So a little tidbit that just might be important later, Melinda is important enough in the gas station hierarchy to have the codes to the safe in the back. So we cut back to the front of the store where we last left Sheila and she's out there trying to work on her twerk. Like she's literally like, yo, Melinda, how my butt cheeks look? Are you looking? You looking? And this scene right here is yet another glimpse of exactly who Melinda is because Sheila somehow convinces socially awkward Melinda to also practice twerking. And right here, you kind of get a feel that Melinda is kind of a people pleaser. Uh -huh. Pay attention. So we've learned quite a bit about Melinda, but we don't really know a lot about Sheila until this scene right here, where Sheila is recording Melinda doing her little twerk Olympics. And then Sheila is recording said twerk Olympics without Melinda knowing, and she refuses to delete the dang thing. So this next scene with this older customer is supposed to set up that Sheila is always getting the attention of the male patrons, customers that come into the gas station, while no one really pays attention to Melinda even though Melinda is trying to go out of her way to be nice to people and Sheila is really rude to them and it's such a sad scene because Melinda introduces herself to this guy and the guy literally doesn't even look at her like he is like dead set focus on Sheila oh Sheila dude that's like your parents baby making music right there Woo! pro tip to all the guys out there Dr. Scholl's insoles is never a good gift People buy that on their own. Don't gift Dr. Scholl's insoles, bruh. And I feel like this lady in back that's waiting in line embodies all of us. She's like, bruh, when is this line gonna move? I'm trying to buy two scratch offs, an RC cola, and some wiper fluid. You and foot fetish man need to take this outside. So poor random nameless dude is rejected by, well, actually he's not, no, he's not nameless. Fred. So Fred gets rejected by Sheila. He goes outside. He's all moping. And here comes Melinda to save the day to try to make him feel better. But he ain't trying to hear that. Dude, he wants Sheila. The insoles fit my shoes perfectly. It's like Cinderella. The shoe fits. And Fred's like, well, if you Cinderella, I'm trying to get one of your bad stepsisters. You know what I'm saying? So, so far, when it comes to important characters, sorry, Fred, we know Melinda, we know Sheila, and now we're introduced to Billy. So while Melinda and Billy are exchanging niceties, here come the popo. I wonder if it's the same sheriff that Melinda has been creep shotting for the last few weeks. Hmm. Ooh, look at that thirsty face right there. She's like, oh. My police officer is here. So the first line we hear the sheriff say is, don't you wish people picked up after themselves? Oh, well, I guess if they did, you wouldn't have a job. That just feels like the most condescending thing to tell somebody at work. <laughs> right? I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Meanwhile, Billy is doing the worst incognito surveillance you ever done seen. Like, dude, what is this? What is, I, I, I can't look suspicious. <laughs> what is this, Billy? <laughs> Now, speaking of benign small talk, right here, the sheriff is bragging about the zero to 60 time in his cop car. He's like, yo, zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds, which let's be clear, is speedy, but it ain't worth bragging about, let me tell you. But Melinda eats it up. Dude could have said 12 seconds. She still would have loved it. So despite Billy's best stealth efforts, Sheila notices a customer's in the store and asks him, hey, you need some help? You've been staring at these condoms for like a hot minute. And this is where not body positive mean girl Sheila makes fun of his ping ping size. Do it if he wants some magnums, let him have some magnums. But no, she recommends the smaller size. Rude. This has absolutely 
absolutely nothing to do with the movie. This is more of a today I learned from myself. But in the movie, Melinda asks, are the windows to your cop car bulletproof? And he goes, nah, dude, if someone starts shooting, I'm getting hit. Dude, I thought they were bulletproof. I learned something new every day. So Thirsty McGee Melinda, who literally just clocked in about 30 minutes ago, is telling the cop, hey, I can take my break right now if you want to go for a ride. The sheriff politely declines. So Melinda finds a way to weasel her way into the cop car in the passenger side, and she hits him with the line of, hey, maybe I'll do something to get arrested. That way we can hang out and you can be doing your job at the same time. Hey, man, points for creativity. But of course, the sheriff ever professional is like, hey, I'm on the clock, maybe some other time. I'm just here to get coffee. Yeah, that finger coffee. <laughs> So here we have a perfect scene, right? We have Billy in the background, we have the aforementioned condoms, we got the finger coffee, we got the sheriff, and we have a flamingo? So the sheriff goes to check out his little finger coffee, and he picks up some hard pills. You know what I'm talking about, I gotta keep it PG. So these pills are fast action, extra strength, sex enhancement, hardcore, with a 100% guarantee. L let's think about that for a second, because there ain't no such thing as 100%. There has to be some fellas out there where these pills didn't work. So how do you make good on the 100% guarantee? Do you go back to the store, talk to Sheila, and be like, hey, uh, I bought these pills last night, and let me tell you, actually, you know what? They worked great. They worked great. I, I just wanted to come in here and tell you how good they worked. You know what I'm saying? I was long and strong all night long. Everything's fine. See y'all later. Meanwhile, while all this hardcore pill action is being discussed, Melinda's in the back adding some creep shots to the spanky bank. You know what I'm talking about. And for whatever reason, just Sheila being like, hey... What are you doing over there? Sheila has no idea exactly what Melinda is doing, but still just being spoken to in the moment, Melinda like fumbles her phone like an ass seen on TV ad. But the sheriff being a pretty nice guy, instead of putting her on blast and going through her phone, they bond over the fact that both of their phones have screen cracks. Wow, what are the odds? You are so creepy dude that's what i said and the reason why i think melinda is such a creepy character because obviously if you've seen other horror movies or other psychological thrillers there are clearly more creepy characters out there but the reason why i think melinda is so much more creepier than those is that melinda is like realistic creepy so that ups the creepality real word don't fact check it just respect it melinda has the type of creepy where she can be one of your co-workers Workers, somebody you went to school with, a family member. Dude, it could even be you. Yeah, you. That type of creepy, that realistic creepy, where this character could actually exist in real life, in my opinion, just makes her that much more, don't say it again, creepy. Melinda, always the people pleaser, even at her own peril, lets Sheila see the phone, and she sees that there's not just a couple of pictures, there's like an entire album dedicated to the sheriff. Dude, add another creep to the creep counter. I haven't been keeping track. So of course, mean girl Sheila takes it too far. Melinda's already embarrassed and Sheila takes it another step further once she finds out that Melinda is a virgin, which makes Melinda snatch her phone away and run off to the front of the store. So with all this excitement, Sheila runs away. She goes outside, she smokes a cigarette. She goes back to her happy place in the bathroom, probably swiping left and right. You know what I'm talking about. But when she comes back to the store, she remembers Billy was creeping around. So although we don't see it, we assume Billy Billy has been waiting in the bathroom, waiting for the cop to leave. As soon as the cop left, he comes out of the bathroom with the gun, isolates Sheila, and then just calmly waits patiently for Melinda to come out of the bathroom, points the gun at Melinda, and then instructs Melinda to go stand next to Sheila. And we already been new, but Melinda makes a point to say, yo, Sheila is not my friend. So for whatever reason, Billy is hell bent on being a light robber like he wants to let the girls know hey i'm not a bad guy i'm just down on my luck baby i just need a couple hundred dollars to make it the next week i'm still cool i'm a nice dude so this entire scene in context goes on for an extremely long time on purpose because billy just rambles on and on about how he's a nice guy how he owes money to people and he just needs to pay them back and once he pays them back everything will be fine and why would anyone want to hurt him and he just goes on and on and on and the girls are like dude 
just rob us and leave. We don't need your life story. But Billy is just hell bent on trying to make sure that these girls know he's a nice guy. He's just been wronged. He's not, he's not always an evil dude. He's just evil right now in this moment. That's all. Please like him. Follow him on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and all X. TikTok and all that. So just like the audience, as you sit there and you're like, dude, how long is Billy gonna monologue about his problems? Sheila finally gets tired of it and is like, yo, just rob us and leave, dude. You could have been gone. And if you thought that's what it took to get Billy to kind of speed it up, <laughs> no, dude, he goes back to monologuing. So finally, Billy's nice guy monologue comes to the end and he demands all the money from the gas station. But this is where Sheila, remember what we talked about a little bit earlier, this is a test. Sheila says only the manager can access the safe. Neither myself or Melinda can do it. Sorry. Now, Sheila is an extremely like mean girl, but dude, this line right here is just so good. When she tells Billy like, yo, it's 2019 in the movie. It's 2019. People don't really pay with cash anymore. So, uh, you want your change back? <laughs> Dude, I love that line. So mean girl, cocky Sheila is talking trash to Billy and she says, yo, I don't even think that gun is real. Billy disagrees, the gun's real. So finally with the monologue over and the gun being confirmed real, Sheila finally starts loading up the bag of money for Billy and then Melinda asks such a bizarre question. Hey, you think that's gonna be enough money for you? Are you sure you got enough cash to pay off your debts? How much is your debt? Let's talk about the principal and the interest. Do you owe back payments? Let's talk about it. So all through the movie up until this point, Melinda has just been trying to get attention from anyone that'll give it to her, right? And she sees an opportunity to maybe get on the good side of this Billy character by saying, hey, this is probably not gonna be enough money. There's some more money back in the safe. I can open it for you. So this next scene, you really have to suspend your disbelief just a little bit because Billy is totally fine with Melinda going to the back of the store by herself. Remember, this is the age of the cell phone. She could have easily called 911. Billy is just like completely entrusting Melinda to go into the back, get the money, bring it back, give it to him without calling the police at any moment. I mean, he's right, but it's still a weird thing, isn't it? So of course, this is a gas station. People are gonna be coming in and out. Billy didn't think about any of this, apparently, while he was monologuing. So a couple of customers come in and Billy has to put his gun away and try to just try to act natural, which we know Billy is just really good at. So remember, right, Melinda, creepy, socially awkward, thirsty McGee, sees this as an opportunity to be like, you know what? Maybe I can get Billy to like me. So she buttons down her shirt a little bit because she's like, yo, what could be better than cleavage and cash? <laughs> so we have this really tense moment where Billy is in the back making sure that Sheila does all the right things, doesn't alarm these customers whatsoever, and everything seems to be going right until the customer wants to pay with cash. Now, obviously, all the cash from the cash register is MIA. So how on earth is Sheila gonna give this guy some change? So I just assume the year is 2019 because that's when the movie was made. We do know they have at least iPhones, but in this scene right here, there's supposed to be no service for miles. So this sets up an opportunity for Sheila to draw out a map so this customer can get to his next destination. Sheila uses this as an opportunity to basically write help, which is genius. Sheila, shout out to you. You know what, now that I think about this, yes, it is genius to go ahead and write, call 911, I'm being robbed on this receipt. But when you give the receipt to the customer, Billy has been watching you the entire time. Why wouldn't he just kill you and the customer and the little girl? Like, dude, you're taking everybody down. And what's up with these booty directions? What, what is that? 18 East, 12 miles? Are those directions? Thank God for Google Maps, dude. I couldn't rely on Sheila to get down the street. But Billy didn't even have to spring into action because guess who's here to save the day? Melinda. So as weird as it is that Melinda snatched away the 911 were being robbed message from those customers, I think she also low-key saved their life at the same time. I don't know, shout out to Melinda on this one. So right here in this very moment, if Melinda wasn't creepy, if Melinda wasn't Thirsty McGee, if Melinda wasn't just extremely socially awkward and just craving attention from anyone, anybody, or anything, the movie would end right here. Melinda would give the backpack of money to Billy, Billy would be on his way, he'd pay his debts, and we live happily ever after. But, uh, not exactly. Where are you headed to after this? This line is delivered with like perfection. Like Melinda is just like having like a normal conversation. Like this is just like a regular day. Like, hey man, what you up to after this? What, what, what you gonna be doing after this? <laughs> 
<laughs> what? So not only is Melinda offering cash and cleavage, she's also offering companionship, baby, the three C's. And Billy at this point is like dumbfounded. He's like, wait, you wanna, you wanna come with me? Uh, what? So this kind of shows the audience that Melinda is just tired of working at this gas station. She's tired of doing creep shots. She just wants to go out and just live. So going away with this robber, Billy, that she has absolutely no idea who he is, what he's about, what he's up to, to her is an upgrade to her other life. Once again, whether he's a positive influence or a negative influence, all she knows is that this is going to be a dramatic change in her life, and that's all she craves, something different. So what do you say, Billy? Cash, cleavage, and companionship? He say no. So again, right here, the movie could end. Billy could go off in the sunset. He has the backpack, he has the money. Melinda's staying behind, nobody got hurt. Everything is just turning up Billy right now. Just walk out the door, Billy, but of of course not, monologuing Billy has to have the last word. But also, Sheila has to have the last word. So while Billy is walking out with his money on the victory lap, it should have been a victory lap, Sheila is talking trash as he walks out. And of course, Billy ain't having that. So monologue Billy is back at it. He was almost at the door. Now he's back at the cash register, arguing with Sheila about once again how nice he was, how he made good on his word about not hurting anybody, et cetera, et cetera. Just Billy, just leave, bruh. So they argue back and forth for a while until Sheila calls him the inflammatory B word. No, not Billy. She calls him a B So upon being called the B word, Billy throws all logic out the window and continues to fight, this time physically, with Sheila. And this scene right here is the pivotal turning point of the movie because Billy instructs Melinda to lock the door which means he ain't going nowhere anytime soon. So Billy instructs Melinda to wait in the bathroom and to not come out until he says so. He then drags Sheila to another side room and then Melinda just casually just walks out of the bathroom because it's not like Billy locked her in there or anything like that. The door is unlocked. She just walked out, came back to the front of the store and was like, oh, well, I guess cash cleavage and companionship is over. <laughs> oh, dude, I totally lied about finger coffee. There's more. Why you gotta do that? Why you gotta do that? I don't know. That's what she doing. And this time, since the doors are locked, she's in there by herself. She steps up finger coffee and goes for the whole hand. She literally pours hot coffee all over her hand. Once again, Melinda just wants to feel something, even if it's negative. Now, as a person that doesn't drink coffee, I don't drink any hot beverages. It's the devil's brew. <laughs> Is the coffee that hot in a gas station that I can literally like give you burns on your face? Is it that hot? How y'all drinking it? So Mr. Logistical Criminal Mastermind Billy is shocked and chagrined to see that Melinda has escaped from the bathroom somehow and now has coffee all over his face. Now what I won't show for the sake of the YouTube, as Melinda throws coffee in Billy's face, he panics, he's surprised, the gun goes off, Sheila is dead. Well I guess technically it doesn't matter how hot the coffee is, because here comes Melinda with a fire extinguisher to cool him down. Yeah, that was terrible. So we're starting to understand more and more about what makes Melinda tick, right? Or maybe we don't. But here in this scene, Melinda just goes back to work, basically. She just cleans up Sheila's blood like it's just a regular work day. So in this scene, we can see that Melinda has been mad busy. She's already cleaned up all of her not friend Sheila's blood, and she is completely like orange duct tape and zip tied Billy to a chair. So keep in mind everything that's transpired up into this moment, right? Melinda feels like this is a perfect time to have a sit down with Billy to discuss why he was not interested in cash, cleavage, and companionship. Explain, Billy. Uh, Sheila is literally dead on the ground behind us, and Melinda thinks it's a perfect time to do some marriage counseling? <laughs> what? So Billy is a lot of things in this movie, but one thing he is not, at least up until this point, is a liar. So what he tells Melinda next is actually the truth, that the people that he owes money to knows that he's robbing this very specific gas station, and if he's not back at a certain amount of time, those bikers are gonna come to the gas station looking for Billy. So at this point, if you take away all the context of the dead Sheila, of the robbery, of the coffee to the face and the extinguisher to the head nonsense, the dialogue that happens back and forth in this scene, could almost be confused as like a first date. 
and Melinda is loving it. So it's clear in this scene that Billy is starting to understand what type of person Melinda is and he is playing hard on it. Like, dude, homie is saying anything he can say because at the moment, he's zip tied to a chair, orange duct tape. I don't know why the color is important, but I thought I'd mention. At this point, he doesn't really have a lot of options. So he's just trying to say anything to make Melinda just believe him, release him so he can get past all this nonsense. So major key right now in the Melinda psyche, we now understand how fascinated Melinda really really is when it comes to things being burned, whether it's burning herself, whether it's the simple act of burning a cigarette, maybe even burning something else. I'm not doing spoiler. Well, actually this whole video is a spoiler, but the whole burning yourself, feeling pain thing, eh, it's not really Billy's thing at all. Who can blame him? So he says, hey, can I get some Advil? My head's burning. Um, I got coffee on my face. He hit me with a fire extinguisher, some Advil, something would be nice. And you can see right here in this scene, Melinda is kind of looking down on Billy like really dude you got burned wow big deal so Melinda goes back into the front of the store to get Billy some Fiji water and some pain relief but remember this is a 24 hour gas station so there's a customer like dude are y'all open and Melinda just completely ignores at any time Melinda could have called the police she could have escaped but no she's living in the world that she wants to live in right now so we're not going to spend a lot of time in these next few scenes but here Melinda is faced with a choice does she give Billy some bear for his headache or does she give him 100% sex erection maximum hardcore 100% guaranteed sex pills? I mean, we've all been faced with such a dilemma, have we not? So faced with the dilemma of giving him Advil or ping ping pills, Melinda opts for the ping ping pills. And this is where we're not really going to talk about this next scene. But one thing I will say is a lot of people out there, nobody watching this video, all y'all cool, but a lot of other people out there, if you type in this movie in the Google search, this next scene, the chair scene, is the number one search result outside of the actual movie. If y'all don't just go to the hub and watch something else. So with this scene, I'm not really convinced either way. So Billy, once again, just trying to get out of his situation, agrees to take the money, take the cash, cleavage, and companionship, and just leave. And then Melinda, out of nowhere, says, I have a boyfriend. <coughs> and I'm not sure if she's talking about the sheriff, like, oh, he's my boyfriend, even though he doesn't know. Or maybe Melinda actually has an actual boyfriend outside of all these characters. You never find out. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think Melinda really has a boyfriend? So obviously the ping ping pills are doing absolutely nothing for his headache. So he requests more pills. And of course, Melinda gives him even more ping ping pills. Why do you keep calling him that? Hey man, I'm just trying to, you know, be safe for YouTube. So this scene right here, I'm also conflicted it with as well because Melinda says hey I know you're lying to me which is true like obviously Billy's just saying whatever he can say to get out of the situation all right so cool we're completely aligned on that but then Melinda says I know as soon as you untie me you're going to kill me but I really wonder if that's true or not because based on what we know about Billy's character up until this point he goes into this gas station to rob it with no mask whatsoever right like he's in there with no mask I kind of feel like if he was let go at this point, he wouldn't try to kill her. Maybe I'm just naive, dude. Once again, you guys let me know. So after exceeding the recommended dose of ping ping pills, eventually Billy's heart goes crazy, his ear starts bleeding, and he ain't looking so good. But now Melinda is in charge of the firearm and what could go wrong at this point? So now we get to add another C to the lineup, right? So we got cash, we got cleavage, Companionship? Can you be your own companion? I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. And Colt, Co-45, the gun. It might not be a Colt 45, but dude, I need another C word. Let me have it. So in Melinda's world right now, Sheila's dead, Billy's dead. It's time to clock back in, baby. Let me unlock the store and get back to work. So again, for the sake of the YouTube, we're not gonna show this scene in particular, but it does give us a glimpse that Melinda actually does feel empathy. She does feel regret. And she's thinking about taking a way out. You know what I'm talking about. So this entire time, Melinda is completely breaking down. Meanwhile, this customer is like, dude, where's the coffee? Bruh, bruh, trust me, you don't want the finger coffee. You're good. Get you some of them energy drinks or some of them Starbucks coffee things in the fridge. You'll be all right. And right here, the customer comes up to Melinda. You think he's going to offer, I don't know, some wisdom, try to have a little bit of empathy for Melinda because she's just bawling her eyes out behind the counter. And what does this guy say? Hey, man, I just want some coffee. I ain't, I ain't trying to get involved with whatever you were involved in. Can a brother just get some hot coffee, please? So after the coffee guy leaves, another customer comes in, but this customer knows Melinda's name. 
It's Melinda. That means Melinda knows who this guy is. What's his name? I'm not sure yet. So we find out this mystery man is actually Sheila's boyfriend. And he was supposed to be here at this time to pick up Sheila from work. So now he's like, yo, where's Sheila? I've been calling her nonstop. Where is she? And he decides, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and dial her up right now while I'm in the store standing next to you. I wonder what's about to happen. So as Sheila's phone is ringing and vibrating in the store, Melinda tries her worst poker face. Like, dude, this entire movie, Melinda has been like basically stone cold face the entire time until it finally counted. So now she's just crying. Oh, he, she's not here. I swear. She's not here. She's obviously somewhere. So now boyfriend is asking questions like, hey, why did Sheila drop her phone right here? Which when like, when you take all the context of the robbery and the deaths and all that good stuff, like, dude, how am I supposed to know your girl, man? She probably just dropped the phone. Why are you asking me, dude? So Sheila's boyfriend also has kind of like a creepy streak. So as he is questioning Melinda, trying to figure out where Sheila is, why she dropped her phone, why she's crying, he's like slowly like walking closer and closer to her with like the creepiest face ever. Like, dude, back up, man. Who does that? When people back up, don't close the distance. They're trying to back up for a reason. Man, are my elbows ashy? So after getting interrogated by Sheila's boyfriend, Melinda comes up with the story that Sheila left with another guy earlier in the day and just left her phone on the ground and the guy went down to the Motel 6. I don't know how Melinda knows all of these details, but there you go. That's the story she went with. So Melinda was successfully able to convince Sheila's boyfriend that Sheila was off at a Motel 6 somewhere. So then Melinda goes back into the break room to confirm that both Sheila and Bill are accounted for they are so Melinda ever tidy and still on the clock decides you know what I need to get these dead bodies out the break room so she decides to dig a hole look at those gas prices that's not the important thing in the scene so here come the bikers that Billy was not lying about once again the bikers knew that Billy was coming to this specific store to rob it to get money to pay these guys back it's been a little too long so here come the bikers so this has absolutely nothing to do with the movie but this scene is so funny to me for like the wrong reasons so while melinda is talking to the bikers trying to convince them not to come into the store the entire time the other bikers are like shuffling and gyrating in the back and all you hear is like the leather squeaking back and forth over and over it's just so funny to me so melinda clearly has never done anything like this before so she literally flat out asked these bikers hey uh do y'all have any experience in accidentally killing people than getting rid of the bodies on purpose have any tips or guides when it comes to anything like that not for me somebody i know her name is belinda so the bikers aren't buying melinda's story and they want to get in that store by any means necessary so this is where melinda pulls out the strap but so do the bikers dude it's a standoff but luckily for melinda the leader of the biker gang is like this cool calm collected guy and he's like hey put your guns down of course, right? So between that exchange and the cool, calm, collected biker gang leader, the biker gang leave because they say, you know what? Too many cameras around here. And you can see in that very moment, Melinda's like, oh yeah, cameras. Ah, oh, in fact, you're on camera right now. So although Melinda has the managerial power to open up the cash safe, she does not have the power to open up the lock that houses all of the hard drives for the security cameras. So now knowing that every single thing that's happened tonight was all caught on camera, Melinda's like, yo, it's time to make good on the name of this movie. Burn. A little throwback to the beginning of the movie when she berated that one guy for smoking next to the pumps. Here she is smoking next to the pumps. Dude, I completely left that one part. Right before Sheila's boyfriend walked in, Melinda started to dial 911 and it did connect. And if you're not familiar, when you call 911, it doesn't matter if you talk to someone or not, if you hang up immediately, the police are either gonna show up or they're gonna call you back. Now, I assume they weren't able to call her back, so here comes Sheriff to kind of check on the scene to see what's going on. The first person he sees is Melinda. He then draws his sidearm. So keep in mind, in one hand, Melinda has a full gas canister, so when she's raising her hands for the police she just has one hand up like raise your hands here you go don't worry about what i got in my other hand and even the sheriff doesn't pick up on it because he tells melinda go ahead and put your hands down bruh <laughs> don't make 
to teach you this stuff in draining? All right, so re-watching this again, I might have completely lied, maybe, sorta, kinda. So Melinda does attempt to call 911, so I still think that that's probably valid, but at the same time, the sheriff in this scene says the car outside matches the description of a stolen car that Billy was driving. So I'm not sure why the sheriff showed up, whether he saw the car while he was driving by or he, he got the 911 call. Either way, the sheriff's here. I, he's here. Completely without a warrant, Mr. Sheriff, he tells Melinda that he needs access to all the surveillance tapes so he can kind of, you know, uh, corroborate the stolen car, who came in, who didn't come in, and he really needs to see all of the surveillance for the last few hours. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we know that Melinda does not have the managerial clearance to access the surveillance tapes. But then Sheriff Karen has a great idea. Let me just call your manager, Diane. What's her number? She sleep? Oh, I'll wake her up. So Sheriff Karen, I don't know why I'm calling him that. So the sheriff does get Melinda's manager on the phone. So now Diane is on the way to the gas station to unlock the surveillance tapes. Now, once again, and many times throughout this movie, Melinda's actions kind of throw me off a little bit. So what Melinda tries to do is that she tries to throw the sheriff off of the trail by saying that the guy pulled up in the car, but then he left in a green Jeep. The green Jeep is what Sheila's boyfriend drives. So it seems like Melinda is trying to set up Sheila's boyfriend to take the fall for everything that happened thus far. All right, so I guess I do understand what Melinda was trying to do. All right, never mind. So the sheriff completely buys the story of the green Jeep and the Motel 6, and the sheriff's like, all right, I'll go follow that up. But before I do, I want to do a little clean sweepy-eepy of the entire perimeter. And Melinda's like, the entire store? So the sheriff then begins searching the entire gas station, going through the bathrooms, and there's only one room left the break room. And Melinda, seeing the sheriff walk down that hallway knowing that just in a matter of moments, this sheriff is gonna come across two bodies. So now Melinda has a decision to make. Does she let her crush the sheriff, discover these two bodies knowing that she's responsible? Or does she kill him? Just, just, just kill him instead. Melinda taking criminal mastermind courses from Billy from earlier. So this is an extremely intense scene. The sheriff is down the hallway. He's already opened the break room door. He's attempting to like almost look in. You have Melinda down the hallway with a clear shot. What's gonna happen next? Literally nothing, nothing happens. This police officer, you know the guy, the guy that was like, uh, put, your, put both of your hands down. Uh, all right, I'll put both my hands down. He looks in the break room door, which is like a little peep. He just goes, eh, looks good to me, I'm out. <laughs> and nothing happened. And again, this sheriff, Mr. Put both your hands down. That guy, Mr. Peep in the break room, everything looks good in here. That guy, now he's looking at Melinda. Once again, who stands like this normally with one hand forward, one hand behind your back? There's a gun there, Sheriff! This is yet another scene of many where Melinda just kind of forgets what's happening all around her. She gets the Sheriff's cell phone number, his personal cell phone number, and she's kind of like cheesing a little bit. She's like, I got them digits finally. I knew you'd come around, baby. So of course, Melinda completely confused that the Sheriff didn't find anything inside the break room. She goes and takes a look-see herself, and all she sees is empty zip ties. Where'd Billy go? So you got empty zip ties, Billy is nowhere to be found, you got the sheriff off on some scavenger hunt at a Motel 6, Melinda's like, now it's the time to burn this mother down. Oh, Melinda, not the flamingo. And she made sure to put extra gasoline on those hard drives for the surveillance cameras. Oh, someone is still left inside the gas station. The power is out. I wonder who it is. Now, I've never worked in a gas station, but this just seems like a fire hazard. So all of the power is cut to the gas station, which automatically locks the doors from the inside, so she can't get out. I feel like that's not a thing. So here we are, we finally made it. This scene right here is actually the scene that we saw at the beginning of the movie, which gave us a glimpse of what was happening towards the end of the movie at this point of the movie right now. And as much as I like that technique where you show a little bit of the end of the movie at the very beginning and you work your way towards it, 
I think it kind of does a disservice in this movie because we knew if we watched the intro of the movie that Billy wasn't dead and Billy was going to come back, right? Like we always knew Billy was still around, which I don't know, man. It's not that big of a major spoiler, but I feel like it didn't really add anything to the movie to show this scene in the in the, in the very beginning. In my opinion, I ain't no director. I'm just saying some stuff. So while all this is happening, Sheila's boyfriend already made the loop at the Motel 6 and he's back at the gas station to tell Melinda Hey, I didn't see Sheila there. What's going on? And he comes across this scene where the store is locked, the lights are out, there's gasoline everywhere, and he's confronted by Melinda and Billy basically having a standoff. Now, during the kerfuffle, ooh, kerfuffle? Is that, am I using that right? Whatever. <laughs> during the kerfuffle, Billy sneaks out the back and then pushes the dumpster against the back door, going for the pincer maneuver. One of my favorite maneuvers, y'all know. So Sheila's boyfriend is out in the front completely exposed with a random Billy creeping around. Now I find this part a little comical because Sheila's boyfriend earlier didn't know anything about personal space when he kept on marching towards Melinda earlier, remember that? But now Billy is doing the same exact thing as Billy is telling the story about what's happening. Billy keeps walking into Sheila's boyfriend's personal space. I should really know this guy's name, but it's not important now, dude, the, the movie's almost over. Surprise backpack strap. <laughs> So even though logistical criminal mastermind Billy with the pincer maneuver and the surprise backpack strapped to the neck, even with all of that was still not able to subdue Sheila's boyfriend until he grabs an air pressure nozzle tire filler upper. I don't know the technical term of these things, but you know what I'm talking about. Those things that you fill up your tire with. So luckily for Billy, unlucky for Sheila's boyfriend, someone put some quarters in a little air pressure machine. You know what I'm talking about, the air pump. Air pump, that's what they're called and he shoves the air pump down Sheila's boyfriend's throat and turns it on. Like, I mean, air is good, but you don't want it like that, do you? Like, I, I feel like that probably like burst his lungs in some way. I don't know what would happen. I've never seen a scene like this before. Crazy. So yeah, Mr. I'm totally a nice guy Billy has just killed Sheila's boyfriend. What a nice guy. That's clearly what nice guys do, right? So in a little bit of reprieve, Billy takes the green Jeep that the cops are looking for and drives off. Melinda takes this opportunity to finally call the police officer using his personal cell phone digits. Surprise Jeep through the window, which doesn't make any sense because the only thing that's blocking the back door is a dumpster that the logistical criminal mastermind Billy slid there in the first place. Why go through the trouble of ramming the Jeep through the front door? Just push the dumpster back and go through the back door, baby. What you doing? So Billy is faced with the same exact dilemma that he had in the very beginning of the movie. The backpack of money is sitting on the cash register. Melinda is a mile away. He can literally just take the bag of money and leave. What do you think Billy's gonna do? Well, you might be thinking, well, it's too late. There's too much evidence all over the place. But Melinda literally says, yo, Check out all the gasoline all around the gas station. I'm about to burn this sucker down. I don't want to get in trouble on this either. Let's just burn this place down and just leave. Take the money. Come on, let's do it. But of course, Mr. Logistical Criminal Mastermind Ego Too Big For His Body Billy says, you know what? I need to teach Melinda a lesson. So he grabs the gun that is completely covered in gasolina, Daddy Yankee. And, uh... I guess you're gonna find out what happens next. And Billy in this scene tells you everything you need to know about him as a person, because even at this moment, at this moment in the story, in the movie, he blames everyone else for what happened. He's like, you turned me into a killer. You made this complicated. No, Billy, you were scot-free about a half hour ago. So of course, Billy just can't leave well enough alone. He fires the gun at Melinda that's completely covered in gasolina. Somehow, Somehow, Melinda, with her sixth sense and her matrix skills, has already ducked out of the way. How? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But Melinda literally ducks out of the way of the bullet. It explodes, and now Billy's on fire. So now Billy is completely on fire. He forgot all of his kindergarten teachings about stop dropping and rolling, maybe going out the back door, pushing the dumpster. I don't know. He could have done so many things, but he's just like, ah, I'm just going to be on fire. Ah, I tried. I tried. Ah, what do you want me to do? Now, remember, there is gasolina all over this place, and it's also in Trap Melinda as well. But remember, Melinda is cool with being burned, baby. So she runs through the fire. Her, her whole lower torso turns on fire, but she still has the wherewithal. Ooh. Is that the right usage of that word? I think it is. She grabs the fire extinguisher and puts her leg meat out. 
So yeah, she's a little toasty, but she is alive, and she knows that all of that surveillance footage inside the gas station is all burnt to a crisp, and she can tell basically any story she wants, and she knows that the sheriff is gonna believe her. And now one thing you can kind of think about screwing this entire thing over is like if the surveillance footage went up to the cloud, then she'd be screwed. But for, for this movie, all of the data is on those hard drives, they're burnt to a crisp, happily ever after, I guess? So as the movie closes out, Melinda's a pretty happy camper, right? She finally got what she wanted in the very beginning of the movie. She gets to ride in the cop car. Um, she's got the attention of the sheriff and they're probably gonna have this little shared connection that they have molded through the trauma of the situation. And who knows, they might even start dating. Melinda literally learns no lessons in this entire movie. She's happy. And that is the movie of Burn. Now, I wouldn't say it's like the best movie I've ever seen, but it was so uniquely good. The entire time I was watching it, I really didn't know what to expect from Melinda, and she surprised me every step of the way. I have got to say, the actress that played Melinda, she, she, she played that role so well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she actually is like that in real life. Just joking, just joking. But she plays the role of this creepy, you know, what's going on inside of her head, socially awkward. Just like she plays that role so perfectly that I was completely convinced the entire movie through that she was Melinda. Like she played that role to the T. So that's Burn. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm out.